Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we are in our last episode of Fable Breakers. Number 10. Number 10. Live and in person. Live, yep. In Carly's house. Yes. Um, where else would we have it? Not in my house, definitely not. <laughs> um, in cyberspace. You guys don't know how, how many times one of my siblings has come in in the middle of a recording <laughs> and I've had to like edit that out probably once per episode my mom is always knocking on my door and shoving laundry baskets into my room <laughs> so um yeah it's probably better that we had it at your house yes, instead of it nice my, nice vacant my house place yeah so this is our last episode and what we're going to be doing uh for this episode is just um recapping looking back at all of all the good times we had. Um, <laughs> you can't cry. Uh, I know, I know. But it was in our Google Doc for this at the bottom. I just have that I'm not yeah. allowed to cry, so that's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> edit that out, yeah. Um, edit out any crying. So, yeah, we're just going to look back at some of our, our guests, so stay with us here. Um, I guess we'll start with our origin story. Yeah. And maybe we've touched on this a little bit, but... Um, yeah, I sent you an email. <laughs> yeah, you did. You sure did. And I was just thinking, I forgot when that was. It was back in January. January. It was a long okay. time ago. Um, but those four or five months was just all us preparing yeah, and getting so ready. So much like Google Docs. Google Docs and, and Jake's famous like novel like emails. Novel like yeah. emails. <laughs> which I'm like, I feel like I'm getting better at. Uh -huh. But at the beginning, yeah, there was a lot of information kind of passed back and forth. Um, and you say you're not a writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am so sorry for all that. I started Fable Breakers because, um, well, there were other podcasts that I had been listening to over the winter. Yeah, there were like two or three that, that inspired me. The Paper Wings one, which I've talked with, screamed about to you, Carly, a lot. Um, was I've really heard about it from Tori, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just remember reading the, uh, listening to those podcasts, and I was like, I want to do something like this. I want to just have other people that I can talk to about art, because I don't get to do that mm -hmm. every day. So there was probably a moment where I was like, I just have to do it. And I rolled out of bed, and I emailed Carly this <laughs> huge email, and, um, and thankfully she said yes. And yeah, and the rest is history, I guess. Yeah, so, really. <laughs> um, thank you, Carly, for... <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. For putting up with me. Yeah, it's been <laughs> Thank fun. Thank you for putting up with me. Oh, goodness. And all my metaphors. And yeah. I was going to say, um, there goes our Tory mention of the episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can we add that? Let's add that at the end. Yeah. We, um... <laughs> we have kept count of how many metaphors I make. Or, was it how many I'm It's not just you. It's how everyone, but most of them were you. Okay. So, but it is everyone. And then how many times we mention Tory? Because we happen to mention her in every we episode. We <laughs> We're like... We're like the Tory fan club and the Amy fan club. I feel like I, yeah. I like just constantly freak out about her anytime mm -hmm. I like read her writing. And um, of course, she has the Bright Eyes podcast, which is really good. And you I should just, listen to it. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, all the work she puts into it and um, her whole squad that she has, um, it really shows through. And so maybe, maybe now that Fable Breakers is over, you can you can start listening to Amy's yeah. instead, and um, and that'll kind of keep you going creatively. She really does a great job with everything that she does. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, she was she was probably one of my favorite episodes, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just so excited about Tori's because I've known Tori for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And she's such an inspiration to me, and I feel like I always go to her to, to get, like, bits of wisdom on creativity. And anytime I we sit down and talk together, I feel like I'm always – I always leave, like, re-energized yeah. and feeling more creative and ready to do things. And I just, like, wanted to – amplify her voice to yeah, like yeah. the entire internet because she's helped me so much she's so articulate mm -hmm. and um it's and it's so disarming because she's such a sweet person and mm -hmm. um even in the way she speaks um she's very thoughtful and then she has this great sense of humor yeah. which you don't <laughs> expect kind of um i think that was one of the first episodes that i had like thought about when i was coming up with like an episode list was talking about art education and it was interesting to hear her take on it and then George's take on it mm -hmm. in episode two. So that was, um, I think that was a really good discussion between the both of them. And they, it seems like they had similar experiences, but yeah. um, I think Tori was probably a little more optimistic in the way that she mm -hmm. viewed it. The one thing that she said towards the end of the episode was that like your your attitude um, really determines like a lot about your experiences mm -hmm. in life. So um, the fact that she had a good attitude about it um, made it more worth it for her, and that's something was a big takeaway for me in, in that mm -hmm. episode. Um, another thing that she mentioned, too, was the self-doubt as an obstacle. 
and then how she recognizes it as something that's going to be there even before she starts creating and mm -hmm. um, the fact that she pushes past it like initially um, and she's has a grasp on that that's something I took away too because I have a lot of self-doubt when I create mm -hmm. but knowing that it's going to be there and then like saying like no I'm not gonna let this get in my way um, that's something I was taking notes on for that episode and something I really took away mm -hmm. um, when we were talking and stuff so yeah I feel like that reminds me of what you said recently about um, the like trying to finish your sketches yeah and stuff just yeah. like pushing past the doubt and letting yourself work on you know what you've started I think that's an important thing to finish what you've started even mm -hmm. if it's maybe not something you like very much or even if it's just something as small as a sketch but Tori did talk about that um, make you know making goals about a specific thing that she's yeah. going to finish yep. which is really n not new to me I don't know I'm deadlines really scare me yeah setting deadlines for myself really scares me and I like hate New Year's resolutions and stuff <laughs> or I mean I don't really it's know a lot of cause I, it's a lot of pressure to yeah you. Yeah. I don't even I can't really say it doesn't help me because I haven't like tried yeah yeah really I just know how it feels to start and then like I don't know to try to set the that kind of thing up for myself is really intimidating and usually I just get kind of pushed over by the yeah. fact that it's intimidating and then I just kind of go about things something else Tori said um, oh about storytellers yeah, shaping culture mm -hmm. um, and, and the dangerous weapon, right? That was her that... Yeah, you yeah. brought up the dangerous weapon thing and she, mm -hmm. she kind of agreed and said, yeah, it can be dangerous because yeah. we're shaping culture. But she was kind of able to spell it out for yeah. us in a way that we... in a deeper way that we hadn't, uh, hadn't done before. Yeah. And I really liked... I like thinking about that yeah. now. Thinking back and thinking about the, the ideas that I'm putting into my stories and... Um, and it can be empowering, too, to think about your work that way. Yeah. That this is going to go out and shape culture and shape the way that people think. Um, I have here for episode four, it just says Amy, like, all in <laughs> yeah. caps. Like, that's that's I me mean, screaming, I, Amy. I agree, yeah, same. <laughs> um, I, I can relate to that statement. Yeah. <laughs> the Amy fan club. Yeah. I don't, does she even know that we, like, geek out about her? <laughs> yeah. She's going to find out one way or the other. Um... <laughs> She was so open about her mental health struggles, yeah, which is really important. That was kind of the a, a focus um, during that episode, and I really admire that mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't like to talk about it, and um, or like we mentioned, people do talk about it, but they talk about it in the wrong light. They romanticize it. So um, she was very honest about that, um, and honest about the issues with mm -hmm. that discussion. So oh, and she also mentioned how um, like those mental health struggles in kind of inspire her and they they don't define or they don't yeah they, the struggle doesn't define her it inspires her to, to make something mm -hmm. um important and she um she has that in some of her stories too i think she has one sci-fi novel that she's working on or has worked on mm -hmm. where it's about like she said it was like teenagers in space and it's about mental health mm -hmm. um which i can't wait that to read. teenagers in space is the podcast oh that is that is the podcast i thought yeah, that it was she, she does have a sci-fi novel that's about mental health oh too. okay it's okay like, yeah, I don't know much about it. Um, I think it's like a super soldier kind of thing. Or okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But, yeah, it does involve mental health. That's what art is. And even in Sarah's episode, too, we talked about, like, mm -hmm. externalizing things through your art. And it's, like, cathartic in that way, too. So she was very open about that and very honest about that. That's something I took away from that episode, too. And um, I'd love to incorporate more into my art. Yeah. Mental health is one of those things that I think influences everything you create whether or not you think it does but yeah. with Amy like she's deliberately um like starting a conversation about yeah. it yes with with her stories which I think is really important and it's nice that there's someone like Amy who understands <laughs> the the pitfalls of the conversations yeah. in media about mental health and wants to like clear the air about it and just be truthful and honest but not romanticizing yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's like such a fine. Behaviors. I think there's a fine line. Yeah. But like, she and you have to work to finding that line, and that's what she's doing. Like, she's she really is very focused on finding, you know, what's the balance between these two things. So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Amy is fed up with your lame Christian yeah. media and your romanticizing mental health it's struggles. So true, that's my note um, for her there. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, she talked about Christian media too, and mm -hmm. especially as Christians, we, maybe we have more of a responsibility to be making something that people are going to want to listen to because yeah. the message is that much more important. And um, 
And yeah, there was so much more to be said in that episode about that <laughs> kind of stuff. But um, Amy is another example of like a friend I have who I just want to amplify their voice to the entire internet. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this podcast basically just gave me the opportunity to give all my best friends a microphone and let them say all their smart things to the world. Yeah, yeah. I think we have a we have an opportunity with this this podcast. That was you know something I was too like that I was excited about is like I have so many talented friends like mm. you and you know everyone else too um and you know maybe they're not getting the exposure they deserve too um so that was it was so cool to geek out of my friends I just love my friends so much yeah. so and I got to like I threw Tori and Amy into the mix and then all these other people Jake mm-hmm. brought along that I had never heard of that were like in industries that I'm not super big in because I'm more of a writer than a visual artist yeah like I don't make a living off of art and I don't necessarily want to pursue a career in visual art Mm -hmm. but it's just so interesting to hear the uh, the experiences of people who are doing that and to just see how that um, how their creative processes can relate to mine yeah like across these different lines I don't know I thought that was a really cool thing that we got to talk about and just see how similar we can be in in certain aspects of um, of what we create, even if they're not exactly the same forms. Yeah, I felt that too, as, as an artist, and hearing like different writers' processes. Mm-hmm. Um, that was interesting for me too to hear and see the connections, but also see the differences too mm-hmm. between my own process. Um, and now I'm like actually making alterations based on like mm-hmm. alterations on my process based on what I've been hearing too. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the goal of Fable Breakers, too, was yeah. to open the, those discussions that we wouldn't have otherwise had. So um, I guess we, we accomplished that goal, which is, <laughs> that's encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the first time we, um, I think, our, no, George, George was my first mm. friend that I, yeah. I was going to bring up Scott, too, because um, that, that episode was, was really interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was actually sparked by um, me and Scott go and like have dinner with a bunch of friends guy friends every like once a month um and just talk about stuff like this and i think at one point we went to like applebee's or something and he tried to explain the cave <laughs> and, and he was like he was like writing on a napkin um wow. he explained it in a really clear way to to me um because i was asking him as a philosophy major like what is the purpose of art why mm-hmm. why should we even bother at all yeah, he just articulated it really well, and I was like, oh, we got to get him on the podcast to mm-hmm. talk about this, and it was really encouraging for me. And That was a fun episode. I just like that we, we had someone on the show who wasn't an artist mm-hmm. necessarily, like they weren't a creator like that, but they still gave their, like the, I guess the more technical mm-hmm. yeah. kind of uh, side of, of the conversation, and it just made me think of um, things I had read in college that I forgot because I read... Yeah both um, Aristotle's Poetics and the Allegory of the Cave. And I, so I knew those things, but I hadn't thought about them in a while. So maybe you remember things I thought yeah. college had. It was pretty much all <laughs> new to me. So, um, oh, something about that episode too. Uh, well, we started talking about purpose, the purpose of art mm-hmm. and, um, and like how we value certain kinds of art over others, like advertising versus illustration. Um, and then we kind of the conversation kind of changed from like some things aren't art you know what whether, makes something what art. makes something art right uh, yeah and um we got can the to the conclusion or at least we abandoned that thought process that things are or aren't art and started talking about um whether things are good or bad, good art, or bad art which was really cool for me because i had gone into that conversation just thinking like well what is art like that's the question I always want to answer what is art and how do we define it and is it different for different people and like we talked about modern art and some people would say like oh this is so stupid and then that boiled down to the question of like well okay maybe it is art but maybe it's not very good art yeah and then that got into the the topic of what's the purpose of art then what makes something a good good piece of art or a bad piece of art um, I thought that was. I don't that was know a if nice we. I don't know if we conclusion. got to the bottom of it, but like, yeah. it was definitely a really um, important discussion to have, and um, and especially in the way that you kind of opened your eyes a little bit too. <laughs> we talked about modern art too, I think, with um, the stare, which we'll get to in a bit. But mm-hmm. um, Scott also brought up video games, um, yeah. which 
we I think we brought up with George uh, with too. George as well, yeah. And he said something about how like video games can help people prioritize. Um, and then he also mentioned, of course, that dragon cancer as a as mm -hmm. um, as something kind of cathartic, even for the family who created the game. Mm -hmm. I love video games, and I think they're a really important part of the art world. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that we were able to bring that up. Yeah, I was so happy because yeah, you and I talk about video games fairly often. I think, we do. but like we didn't necessarily have anyone anyone on the show besides Scott to talk about video games mm -hmm. and why they're important. And I think it's a or how they can be important, I guess you could say, because mm -hmm. I th think there's a big debate over video games and um, which video games are good, and some people think they're all mindless, stupid things that that just like ruin your life and your attention span and things, and I'm like really against thinking that, though I know yeah. there is, with all art, um, the inherent possibility that it could be bad. Like, I guess those mindless video games that don't teach you anything can be an example of like a like bad art yeah um whereas there are a lot of really wonderful beautiful visually stunning video games with amazing stories that do teach you things like monument valley <laughs> yes like monument <laughs> valley um or that dragon cancer or that dragon cancer um, yeah. or anything by super giant games <laughs> <laughs> very true i don't think we talk much about them no i don't think we mention them at all I'm I'm in the middle of playing Pyre, their new game. Oh, too. you started! Yeah. Oh, oh how is it? It's really cool. It's very different than their other games. Mm -hmm. Everything they do is always so different and new, and fun. Um, though with every game I play of theirs, I think it's just my isolated experience mm -hmm. that the combat or like what passes as combat is always extremely disorienting to me and overwhelming, yeah. and I never get it. It oh, takes really? me forever to figure it out. But I think that, I think that's just me because I'm. Transistor get, took me a while. Yeah, I, yeah, I get very easily overwhelmed. George brought up the XP analogy with video mm -hmm. games, which I think probably stuck with you. I just remember yeah. you commenting on it when yeah, we first heard it. Because I play Overwatch, and Overwatch does that. Where, yeah. Like, you get experience points whether you win or lose. And um, actually, Pyre kind of does something like that mm -hmm. um, without spoiling anything. Okay. There, it's not combat necessarily, but there's part of the plot of the game involves like competitions that you conduct against enemies and... Um, one thing about the game that it, it said that I thought was really cool was that whether or not you lose the competition, like the game progresses. You, yeah. don't, you don't get to stop and try again. Like you win or you lose and that's it. And you just keep going. Yeah. So that's I, how it is in real life. You yeah. don't get to restart. Yeah, you don't, get, you don't get to go back to your last save and reload. <laughs> I guess that can, we could talk about George's episode too. Um, I remember at the beginning he... <laughs> So like our our, um, our theme was like freelancing and in, how the starving artist the starving idea. artist um, idea yeah and how I, I asked him like how much of your career have you been a starving artist and and he said like eighty percent <laughs> and I was like okay that's the end of the episode and, yeah because well it's that's the dryer just saying oh, it's that's done. okay <laughs> Carly's dryer is singing to us no. <laughs> don't gonna say don't break the fourth wall but oh, there's no. no fourth wall with this. there is no fourth wall <laughs> anyway um but that moment with the the percent i think we went into that episode thinking like okay our fable is the, the idea of the starving artist and then george like confirmed it mm -hmm. and so Con we're no, confirmed yeah no, we had to like rethink what we were saying yeah um yeah, that was um, that was kind of unexpected. Maybe, maybe I expected it because I know that he has a lot of challenges when he when he um, draws and stuff. So, and I always hear about like difficulties with clients with him and um, how people can be so picky. So, I knew that was going to be a challenge, but I wasn't expecting that kind of percentage. And um, we kind of had to work around it. And I think in the end, like we did have like it, the episode was kind of optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I think that was a moment where we we had to reevaluate like the way we. Um, we saw the podcast. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Because we we had written out like a chart for each episode of like this is the fable we're breaking. Yeah. In the episode, like this is the thing that we believe is not true, um, and then as the episodes went on, it just became clearer and clearer that these ideas are not always as clean cut as we think yeah, they are. Not. And so like we had to we had a shift. face face the reality yeah. that like. Okay, the starving artist thing, like it exists and it's real for this person. And he talked about, you know, how he got around that and how he just dealt with, with those like 
industry troubles yeah. and Tori talked about you know the fact that art school isn't always the best thing for certain people and I don't know it just I think it was a good moment for us especially so early in the podcast yeah to realize that like okay we have to rethink the way we're structuring this in the end though it worked out though because like our tagline is make taking the myth out of making something meaningful and mm -hmm. um more than like the actual like breaking fables I think the rest of the episodes kind of followed that formula like mm -hmm. we're kind of peeking behind the curtain a little bit yeah. as people's processes and like what it means to be an artist so mm -hmm. um because people just see the art and we talked like i said we went behind that curtain we, we kind of you know maybe there's a little bit of a myth to to creating and people yeah or just maybe not a myth but like a mystery yeah and it's just it's one of those professions and worlds where we kind of think it's i don't know it's just creative like it's magic it yeah. just happens like that um and it doesn't. Yeah, and so you're just, like you said, pulling back the curtain to see how things actually function with the human beings who yeah. are creating in this in this industry. Mm -hmm. So I think that was, like, if anything, we accomplished that, and that's really yeah. nice to think yeah. about. And, and it was good we, we did it early on. <laughs> yeah, and we got to give all our friends, like, audiences. Yeah. Um, Even that, I just, like... I've joked that I want to make an, uh, another podcast where all I do is just have my friends talk about their projects because I just love hearing my friends talk about the things they're passionate about. Yeah. I love hearing anyone talk about something yeah. they're passionate about. And so we, we were able to do this. It's for, thrilling. It's mm -hmm. thrilling to hear somebody talk about something that they love and they're just throwing themselves into 100%. Yeah. Um, it makes you want to create. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, that's why I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with like art interviews and artist podcasts because you you see the work but like you want to know what goes on behind it and how how mm -hmm. much fun they have with it so um i love to hear too that people you know love what they do and stuff mm -hmm. um yeah oh okay it's working mm -hmm. um yeah so um oh minty um we didn't talk about her so um oh your dryer's singing again no <laughs> just shut up who knows if, if the mic is even picking it up Pro I don't know this mic is really like pretty we snazzy, have it turned so. up really high and we do um <laughs> that's okay though um I wish my my appliance is saying to me when I would <laughs> make doing the doing the doing my laundry a lot more fun um yeah so Minty was our first guest mm -hmm. and She's just so talented, and, um, mm -hmm. and she does so many conventions, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, she's so is, is really she's so inspiring. dedicated. Yeah, um, and one of the themes, or the theme for for her episode was um, like talking about how she quit her retail job to make a living, for, mm -hmm. like just doing freelancing. Um, that was really encouraging for me to listen back yeah. to, because I'm really adamant about like not working a job. Yeah. Um, there were quotes the, she made air quotes yeah, when she said that um, <laughs> just the idea of like quitting quitting a retail job which is like a thing at the world just kind of thinks it's a job people assume people will just do because they because it's what yeah, people do a retail, retail job or whatever yeah. um, and I uh, it was like comforting for me to hear her say like no I, I quit that because I quit that to pursue like what is important to me and that she was also able to she's doing it and it's sustaining her like she's yeah. making a living off of it and i just love that it, it's kind of breaking the stereotype of like yeah people can make a living yeah. off of art well i mean you even look at and it was nice that we followed up with george yeah because um you had minty saying that she made the decision and then george was like yeah it's not easy but it's mm -hmm. like it is possible yeah um and minty um yeah she kind of brought that to light um mm -hmm. that that is encouraging yeah and i like on the writing side of things, I think like, okay, you walk into a Barnes and Noble, there are all these books there. <laughs> there are a ton of them and there are a ton of books in the world. And as, as kind of like, I don't know, that can be kind of idealist, I guess, but even just something small, even though that's not necessarily small, I'm not sure what the word is that I'm looking for. Something kind of like every day that we just kind of take for granted. Yeah. That's comforting to me, just to see, like, okay, there are people in here who can do this. Yeah. And the people want to read books, or else there there wouldn't be bookstores all over the world. And it, I don't know, it's just comforting for me to think, like, there is a demand. Yeah. Authors are everyday normal people. 
you know, they had to start somewhere. So, um, and it is doable. Yeah. Yeah. To, to make a living. Doing yeah. That. I think that's, that's it. Like for me with the Barnes and Noble, like it just, it, not just one Barnes and Noble, but the fact that Barnes and Noble as an industry <laughs> yeah. exists is like comforting to me. Like it's doable yeah. to, to make a living off of books. Cause I, I know just kind of out of the probability that like there are people whose books are in this store who who like make a living only on making books yeah. and yeah, yeah. and they exist and their books are here and that's just like comforting for me yeah. to think like it's doable I can do it too you know what else is comforting to me too um and it's you know it's my biggest pet peeve when people say like mm-hmm. um you know you're just born talented or whatever um it's actually comforting to me that it's not that way because mm. um in in um thinking about how much control we do have over how like good we are Mm -hmm. as an artist like that's that's a little bit comforting too it's challenging but like I'm glad that we're not just born talented because um what if I wasn't like blessed by my what if I was not blessed by my fairy godmother (laughs) you know then there would just be no hope but like we do all as creative people have hope to push ourselves as far as we want to go like we Mm -hmm. have that control and that's where we get freelancers from and you know Mm -hmm. um these are people who are kind of as epic as it sounds, like they're taking control of their own destiny yeah. in a way. Um, Mindy's quite the superhero, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it was such a good way to start. Yeah. Fable Breakers, she's just... And so applicable to Mindy. Yeah, that, oh yeah, that absolutely. That comparison. I want to hear your thoughts on Jeremy's episode because... Um, oh, I, I put here as I should have titled this episode, Jake Makes a Fool of Himself by mis- mis- Misinterpreting Jeremy's Blog Post, but in the end it all works out. <laughs> because, um, yeah, he wrote a blog post about how um, like writing um, writer's block isn't, isn't part of the creative process. And I think I probably read that in, in haste and mm. didn't pay attention to what he was really trying to say, but it, it did turn out okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> and then my alternate title for the episode was in which Carly hijacks the discussion and makes exponentially more metaphors than usual and proceeds to have a mini epiphany in the middle of a monologue. Yeah, yeah. That I, yeah, I talked a lot in that episode and I like <laughs> totally hijacked the conversation kind of and just started talking about my experiences with creative block. Um, and like in the middle of me talking about that, I like realized you had a light bulb. That went yeah, out. this important thing about like what had happened to me in the past year, and it was really great. I just loved that episode, and I yeah. like that we got to talk about um, the creative process because that's something I I am really passionate about talking about, um, and just like demystifying yeah. the idea of the process. Yep. Um, but yeah, that was that was just an important episode to me. Yeah, and you know that huge. Not huge. Yeah, I, I you wrote, wrote a blog, blog post, post about it afterwards. That was like reflecting on it even more. Yeah, and that helps someone else too. Yeah, which is yeah. like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, that's why we do Fable Breakers. Yeah, <laughs> with you know, um, Jeremy had so many good things to say, and um, and uh, it's interesting to hear how his process changed because I think that episode was about writing processes and stuff mm-hmm. and he used to have this really rigorous schedule that he tried to stick to and then like he decided that didn't work for him and he tried something else and that inspired me a little bit too um and after after I went back and I reread his blog post the one that I misinterpreted it made more sense to me mm-hmm. um and I took notes on that as well because it makes sense like when you're having an art block there's no art, so it's not part of the creative mm-hmm. process. He wasn't saying it doesn't exist. It's yeah. just, you know, that's not part of the actual creation, you mm-hmm. know, um, which was which was interesting. Oh, and also, of course, your <coughs> your metaphor about the house, mm-hmm. which I've, I've mentioned a couple times. Yeah, I'm um, proud of that metaphor. Yeah, that's a... And yeah. Yeah, I didn't really um, kind of realize what it would turn into when I first wrote <laughs> it. Um, and then in the new blog post I wrote, I kind of like... It, it met kind of a resolution, the idea of, like, I wasn't um, I wasn't locked out of the house of writing at all. I, I had the key all along. I was just yeah. trying to get into the wrong house. Because creative people are so sensitive, and I think we're so... It's we easy are. for us to run into a roadblock and just think, like, and be really dramatic. And just think, oh, this is the end of my career. I can't do anything after this. <laughs> like, how am I going to overcome this? But, I don't know. It's like, it's like we run into a roadblock and think, like, that's it. Roads don't exist yeah. anymore. 
Yeah. I mean, a metaphor. Oh. Um, yes. <laughs> um, we'll add that to the metaphor count at the end. Here, let me scroll uh, down here. Well, we, we made, there were two. Did oh, well, we make okay. another one? All right. Oh, so. no, it was, no, it was the Tory mentions, not metaphors. Oh, yeah. Well, one metaphor, it. one Tory right, mention. Let me put, let me, here, I'll add that too. And we'll get uh. to the grand total at the end there. Um, I'm so proud of I you. I love that this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, our last episode with a guest was Sarah and um, the way that worked out was she put out a song that I loved um, and I I listened to it like four or five times at work and I was just it was just so cool to me and I, I wanted to hear about she put how she put it together and then I was like she needs to be on the podcast <laughs> um, and I uh, we have this like little squad of people that like I kind of freak out um, with whenever she releases a song <laughs> and we just like all tag each other in like her <laughs> posts and and she just loves it and um and she she's kind of baffled by it but um aren't we all aren't we all? baffled when people like what we make <laughs> yeah. yeah so um she was a great guest and she's so passionate like mm. i think you've described her as like a free spirit like mm-hmm. the epitome of like a just like a free spirit someone who um holds nothing back so mm-hmm. um yeah, and even the dark things too. That was that was kind of a focus for the episode too. In that, like, you read that poem, yeah, which I loved, and I think it was kind of like the highlight of the episode. Really? Actually, I, like, did you pull that out of thin air? I, like, w- I was, I think the the thought of it came to me as we were talking that I remembered that it existed and I had seen it recently, so it was kind of fresh in my mind. And then I was, I knew it was a short poem, so I just kind of like typed it into my phone as yeah. we were talking, and then it was like, "Hey guys, let me read this thing." I'm so glad but, that I had it and. Um, I think it really summed up kind of the core of what we were trying to, to get at, though. And so I thought it was important to bring that up in the episode. Yeah, because um, some of her work is dark a little bit. Mm-hmm. But that was something that we hadn't brought up in previous episodes about, like, the importance of, like, having something. Like, when you have something honest, sometimes it's dark. Mm-hmm. And, and That's you, okay. Yeah, that's okay. Like, we brought up the stigma of how sometimes people look down on dark things. But, again, you read that poem and... Um, just really beautiful um and i think it, it summed up really well so um that was a really neat neat episode for me mm-hmm. we also talked about like adversity in that episode mm-hmm. um so sarah's a lot younger than both of us mm-hmm. um and so and is amy we, so is we've amy. had a, a few yeah. younger guests I, you know i didn't even realize that amy was much younger than myself because mm-hmm. she's so articulate mm-hmm. um and she seems so mature yeah she is so mature yeah. that i, I just assumed like yeah, yeah and the just, her and sarah are like because Sarah talked about it, um, just the idea that, like, young artists, young doesn't mean inexperienced or unintelligent. Like, yeah, it means we might not um, be, like, as technically adept at things. Oh, so I'm going to play the clip from uh, Sarah's episode where she gives advice to artists. Mm. Um, yeah, there was just so much in there, and it was so Sarah. I don't know, I, I love yeah, it. it was. So. I just I remember the the like tail end of it where she said something of, like, you just have to do something and you have to yell. And you I was have like, to yell. Per- and then you were like, can we just end there? And it was <laughs> it was perfect. And that just reminded me of what Amy said too, the, the little just do it. Oh, they like, just do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, but and that's so funny, that both of them said something like that. And, and they're both young. <laughs> yeah, and but it, I don't know. It it's interesting that I guess our younger guests reach this consensus about just like brazenly pursuing your passions and like not being ashamed of yeah, it yeah yeah like we're just older and jaded oh man and we're I, quiet about it I, I wonder if i hope they don't lose that yeah I hope they don't lose that when they get to be our age yeah it's such a we're, big we're talking like we're like middle-aged we're, we're just both, like we're a both 22 years in older. case anyone's yeah we're just a little bit older but i mean i think about 17 year old jake and he was a very very different person from oh, 22 yeah. year old jake so um yeah i really hope they don't lose that and my, i hope i can get that back at some point i don't know if i ever had that <laughs> that kind of spark but yeah um either. yeah i don't know different, i don't know different people different things uh-huh. so we're gonna we're gonna play that clip now don't wait Don't wait for anything or anyone. Work as hard as you can to further your art. Release it to the public and don't give a crap about any negative responses, but keep decent criticisms in mind and then keep going. You don't get somewhere by sitting. You get places by forging a path with all your might. The harder you swing your machete at the vines, the more (laughs) it'll fall away. And the more you advance and the closer you get to success, 
with growing experience behind you. Because I myself am tempted to just sit around and wait for somebody to be like, hey, Sarah, here's, here's a recording deal. <laughs> here's, here's money. Here's a fan base. Here you go. But I, I have to work towards it. Mm-hmm. I realize that I won't get those things if I don't work for it. Yeah. You can't wait for a certain age and then just expect everything to come to you. You have to work and you have to produce things. You can't just sit around and wait for somebody to come to you. You have to go to them. You know, the more you wait, the the, the farther away your dreams get, but the more you actively reach and climb towards your goals, the closer they get. You just have to make things. You, You make your awful art. You make your good art. And you practice and you practice and you practice and you keep going despite everything. Don't wait for a certain age to arrive and don't wait for somebody to come to you. Don't wait for a fan base to suddenly pop into existence and beg you for, for content. You have, you have to just put, put your soul out there and make people see it. They won't come unless you call, so you have to make art and you have to yell. All right. Um, so... Oh, we're getting towards the end. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't cry, Jake. Oh, okay, can't keep cry. it together. Um, <laughs> we have some, like, questions. Some of these are just comments from listeners. I, I sent out, like, an email or, or a post at one point asking people for their thoughts. And um, So we received all of these questions um, and comments via Carrier Pigeon. So if you haven't sent them in that way, that's why you're not going to hear your question <laughs> today. <laughs> Uh, okay, the first one. Carly, how long have you been a writer? Uh, okay. I don't know the answer to that Like sp- in specific years. Um, I've been seriously writing stories. Like, I mean, I wrote stories when I was in like sixth grade, too. Um, but it took me probably until I was like, I don't know, 16, 17. I had done a ton of like random writing projects just like in the past then just because I knew that I liked it, but I hadn't considered it, considered it as like a really important special thing. Um, but even when I was like very, very young, I would tell stories to myself mm-hmm. like at night to try to help me fall asleep. Like I would take the, the characters from the cartoons I watched during yeah. the day and just like repurpose to them in my mind into stories because I used to have a lot of like sleeping problems and I used, used to like, <laughs> I went through a phase where I wrote songs like very young I, okay. I can't remember how old I was like probably like 12, 13 I just had a giant notebook and I just wrote, wrote like lyrics to songs because uh, for a while I, w- I thought I wanted to be a musician specifically I thought I wanted to be a singer yeah so it's, it's been one of those things that like I feel like the easy answer is just I've been a writer for like my whole life okay. I just didn't really know it I, I didn't consider it as like a serious thing for a very long time but The next question here, Jake, is there a defining piece of art that you are particularly proud of? Um, There was a piece or a series I did when while I was in college. Most of them I drew while I was in my like typesetting class or something. Um, It was called Death to Then, and it was um, about like how different people view their childhood when they look back. Like some people like their childhood and um, and I just remember like coming up with all these different symbols for childhood which I thought were really interesting. So um, I was thinking about childhood as like a teddy bear and like there's one where like there's a bunch of teddy bears just like swarming around this person and that's like maybe someone who doesn't want to remember something. There was another one it's my favorite um like it's one of those things i could still look back on and say like oh i still like this so Mm. probably it's it's really special to me in that way it's this little girl and she's standing like knee deep in water and there's this humongous um like storm cloud coming towards her with this big creepy face on it it's like raining like this sticky like ghibli ink (laughs) (laughs) um and she doesn't have an umbrella that's the thing there's like all these little birds that around her that like have umbrellas and they look like they're Mm. all prepared but like so I, that's one of those things, one of those pieces that I look back on and um, I can actually say, like, I still like this. It, ho- it ages mm-hmm. well. So yeah. that's probably one of my, my particular pieces that I like. Yeah. Um, there's a question here. It just says season two <laughs> with a question mark. Um, maybe. Who maybe. Knows? Who knows? We'll have to <laughs> see what, what happens in our busy lives in the next yeah. couple of <laughs> months coming. I know you're looking for an internship, Carly, so that's something that's on your plate now, and um, I actually have a graphic novel I'm going to be working on next year, so um, 
who knows, maybe there'll be like a, yeah. a season two at some point, but... Um, we have more friends. Yeah, we make more friends. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have to go out and make more friends, which I'm sure won't be a problem, so... Um, <laughs> the next one is definitely for Jake, in all <laughs> caps, why moths, though? Um, it was the question you kind of asked me in my episode, yeah, why all the birds, and I, I forgot to ask you in, in your episode, or we just ran out of time, but um, why moths? Oh, I just, I love bugs. I've always been... So are you, like, not afraid of, like, killing spiders or anything? I don't kill spiders. I, um, it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I don't, uh, I feel bad when I squish mosquitoes, or I try to avoid killing mosquitoes as much as, like, <laughs> I... I don't think that's embarrassing. Oh, it's just, it's so, my family is so weirded out by it. Yesterday or the other day, there was, like, one of those, like, centipedes like the thousand layers in my kitchen and my mom went to squish it and i grabbed a cup instead i was like no he can't he can't help that he's a centipede. <laughs> he can't help that he's like this i oh just gosh. love bugs i don't know um moths specifically though because um uh, i have a lot of trouble sleeping or i've always had trouble sleeping um it's been a really big problem especially when i was younger and moths are nocturnal i i um they're they really are beautiful i i love looking at pictures of moths and yeah so that's that's kind of why the next thing here it says um uh hey thanks for making these videos it's neat to hear from different artists i like that phrase um you're responsible for your own art growth i think that was from tori's episode mm. i gotta up the tori um, <laughs> up the tori count, count. <laughs> um, <laughs> um the comment continues it's so true with everything everything in life it's important to always keep learning um, yeah, that was kind of my takeaway from that episode. Thank yeah. you for letting us know that uh -huh. that was something that um, you took away too. Cool. I loved reading the comments about maybe because I'm like just such a huge narcissist, or maybe that like <laughs> I worked really hard on these, and I love hearing that people are getting things out of them. I mean, uh, yeah, it's great. Just comments are always just like that thing that it, it yeah. feels really good to get, pretty much no matter what the content of them is. Yeah. Well, unless they're like hate unless comments. They're hate comments. We don't get well, those. even then, like. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, Jake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you with your Judge up. Judy gifts. I just eat it up. I got my Judge Judy gifts. I have a whole folder on my desktop just with Judge Judy gifts. And like, yeah. anytime I get hate mail on Tumblr, which is happening less frequently. Um, <laughs> you say that. You like roll your eyes. Like, like it's so a, like, oh, what a shame. <laughs> I just, it's just funny. I don't know. I mean, it's good to have that mindset, I yeah. guess. Yeah. I don't take any of it to heart. Mm -hmm. I, and I just, I'm such a sucker for drama. Really, it's it's such a weakness of mine. Uh, Maybe that's why I love Judge Judy so much. It's like it's like oh, that that shows nothing but it's drama. It's nothing but drama, and and it's like the epitome of like me staying in my own lane because I get to <laughs> I get to like watch other people's drama unfold before my eyes without actually participating in any of it. So it's um, like cathartic for me to watch. I don't, yeah. Wow. I just I I watch Judge Judy all day at work. Um, mm. The next person here says um, in all caps. This is awesome. Chill. <laughs> if you love it so much and you think it's awesome, then why are you asking us to chill? Um, um, maybe you need to chill. Maybe. I, I think that's directed at you, Jake. I think you oh, need to chill. I have, I have an, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of have no chill. I, I need to turn it down. You are the definition of no, no chill. chill. <laughs> no, anything. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel that was kind of directed at me. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. You know what? Well, thanks for saying it's awesome, though. Yeah. I'll, we'll, tr uh, we'll try to chill. I'll try to chill, or I'll just look at that first part, the, and I'll pat myself <laughs> on the back. Yes, it is awesome. Um, I know who the nec this next comment is from. Should I give her a, a shout-out? It's Sure. Um, oh, her username is, I think, Friendly, Friendly Neighborhood Narwhal. Yeah. Emily. I think so. Um, she's one of them. Uh, one of the squad the that Sarah squad the Sarah squad she freaks out with me whenever Sarah releases a song <laughs> and it's just um, I, I can't like say it because I'd have to yell it but it's just yeah Sarah and they, like, <laughs> with a bunch with of a, heart emojis with a bunch of little yellow heart emojis so um, yeah that was we agree so, yes absolutely <laughs> yes Sarah um, <laughs> it's time for the metaphor count um, we're at a grand total drum roll read a grand total of nine metaphors and seeing as we had like 10 episodes that's like about i feel about, like it must you know be more. this wasn't counting your episode though that okay. we interviewed and not mine either um so there were probably more in there but um and most of those were your metaphors yeah, so i take full responsibility 
Do you want to give him the Tory, the Tory count? We, we uh, counted every time. Yes, because we always have to bring up Tory. <laughs> well, because she's, like, like I said, amazing. I feel like, yes, she's amazing, but also so much of, like, I learned so much from her, and I feel like she's taught me so much yeah. about, like, just creativity, and, and she's contributed so much to my worldview yeah. of things that we just quote her all the time. Um, and she hasn't even, like, I haven't even known her for that long. Yeah. And, and I'm quoting her, so what does that say about how credible she is? Yes, very, very credible. Give, us the, no- give us the number card. Um, so the times that we've quoted Tori for the podcast is eight times. Eight total times. That is one, definitely once per episode. Yeah. Tori, if you're listening, you should be flattered. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no, it's the, is this the outro? Is oh, that no. the next thing on the... It is. Oh, no, I don't want to read it. <laughs> do um, we want to do a sappy little thing, or is that part of the outro? Did you have anything to... No. <laughs> I feel like we have to have a moment of just, like, I want to thank the Academy. Oh. And <laughs> I don't well, know. We um, do want to thank We do want people. to... Yeah. Uh, let's thank all of our... Thank you, listeners. Yes. Thank you. Um, we, I don't know what we were thinking when we started this. <laughs> like... Didn't you say, like, near the beginning, like, if how, however many people listen to it? Be, yeah, we had like, a specific number, um, which is completely irrelevant now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but you know what? That I'm was I'm pretty important. sure we surpassed it, didn't we? We did. We, we said Even that... just looking at, like, the views on the first episode on yeah, YouTube is just yeah. amazing. And the fact that people commented on it and that it was shared on social media and stuff. And people, um, there were one or two people... One or two comments. There were a lot of comments, but one or two comments in particular on the YouTube videos that were like just so encouraging to hear, and mm-hmm. especially uh, people saying like, um, you know, I really had a takeaway from this, or, or, um, you know, this helped me in this area. I'm going to change something about the way that I create because of this episode. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what I wanted from the beginning. I was yeah. thinking I just wanted to help somebody in that way. So that made just those one or two comments even just made it so much more worth it for me Mm -hmm. um it was so encouraging so uh thank you thank you listeners and thank you to our guests all of our guests i made so many new friends Uh um you most mostly your friends i feel Uh, well maybe it was even i think there were was it four and four tori and amy for me and And sarah i I found sarah through through your okay so what about Uh, minty minty through you as well okay yeah so four and i guess scott jeremy and George. And George. So, well, like even. Huh. We're almost even. Thank you for introducing <laughs> cool. to me. And thank you for introducing your friends to me. <laughs> and for pulling me along in this yes. little oh, venture. My I, um, I was so scared at the beginning that you would be like, because I don't think I knew you that well when I had uh-huh. first started or when I first emailed you, but like I had read some of your writing and um, I was familiar with what you did. I don't know. Yeah, I probably read some of your poetry or Yeah, stuff. I was thinking about this recently because I tried to remember when I sent you that one story, the night story, and I had written it for a class the, um, the first semester of my senior year, which was September to December. So you would have read that before we started oh, the podcast. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how we like started talking. or It was just Tumblr. Yeah, yeah. Each other. Um, and then I decided that. Well, I don't know. Oh, and you had me read um, your graphic novel once. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah, um, that's true. I guess that was afterwards. Um, But I just decided that you'd be a great fit because you're so articulate. And, um, and, like, I know that you are very purposeful about what you create. So, like, that's something that's always stuck out to me about you. And um, I just knew there was going to be nobody else. (laughs) But I was so scared that you would be like, who the heck is this? But... you had no idea what you were getting into. I but didn't, but it, it didn't. all turned out okay. It turned out okay. It was great, so, and I'm uh, happy to be to have been a part of it. Yeah, it's been exciting. Um, I can't. <laughs> That'll do it for Fable Breakers as a whole. Maybe you might Maybe. get a you might get a second season. Maybe. You're you're definitely going to get a blooper video out of us. Uh, absolutely. Because you need to hear all the millions of times I messed up the intros. <laughs> I have them all saved. Yeah. So it's gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, there's still some more content. Um, yeah. I, um, we're thinking about possibly releasing a merch, a small merch store. Maybe some yeah. like quotes and stuff from from our guests, and then there's gonna be some behind the scenes content yeah, as well. Definitely. So. Be looking forward to that um, in these next couple weeks. There's still a little bit more Fable Breakers to come. So yeah, um, we hope 
that you've enjoyed all of the episodes that we've put out. We definitely have. Um, like I mentioned before, we've made new friends each week, and our hope is that you can go back and listen and kind of um, make some new friends, too, with our guests, just like we have. Um, and you can take something with you, um, really learn something. If you'd like to see all of our show content, then you can visit us at fablebreakers.tumblr.com, where you can find information about all of our guests, an episode list, and um, some fun behind-the-scenes stuff as well. My name is Jake Romano. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Carly Racklin. We are Fable Breakers, and we're here to take the myth out of making something meaningful. <laughs> I didn't know if that was your line. I didn't know. I, you I didn't, didn't color co- code it. I didn't color code it. <laughs> and then at the end of the document, I just have sobbing. Yeah. So. And then I have also bloopers at some point yes. afterwards. Yay. Yep. Got to keep it positive. Yeah. <laughs> cool.